from the shores of Malibu, where the waves are pumping, to the Great Wall of China, and back to the streets of Las Vegas, where the UFC is. We are live. This is It's Time Radio, the show where we talk about what you think about but may be afraid to voice. Do not worry. We will talk about it for you. We talk about everything on It's Time. COVID-19, President Trump, President-to-be Biden, sex, drugs, rock and roll, UFC, film, TV, you name it, we talk about it. And we're here to talk about a lot today. We're going to focus on some COVID talk. We have, of course, TJ DeSantis, my producer and co-host. Oh, I, I, I thought you were just going to gloss over me and get to the doc. I mean, we, time's wasting, Buff. Oh, wait, he's frozen. What are we doing here? Man, the doc's going to have to diagnose some internet I'm, issues. I'm going to have to carry the show. Apparently. Yeah, you gotta, that's why you're on the show, Doc. Okay, we have back our resident expert, our COVID-19 expert, our UFC medical expert, emergency doctor to the stars, doctor to the stars. You name it, he does it. He's working with the NFL. He's working with everybody. Everybody wants a piece of Dr. Jeff Davison, but you know what? They cannot have a piece of him for the next 25 minutes because you're all mine, Doc. You're all mine. How are you, Much buddy? appreciated. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm excited to be here again. I appreciate being welcomed back and uh, – Seems like it's been a while, but I think we've learned a lot in the interim, so we'll talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it, Doc. Let's get right into the meat of the situation. First off, are you okay? Because you're on the front lines. You're, you're in the front lines for us at UFC. You're, you're working with the Raiders now. We'll go into that, too, and some others. Um, but how is it on the front lines in Vegas now, your emergency hospital that you work with? And all I'm reading about, uh, just give a couple notes before you start. Attention all personnel, code red is now code green. Attention all personnel, code red is now code green. Code red is now code three. I love that kind of talk. Can you give us a little uh, input into that? Doc? I thought it said code insight? green. Just, just a, it said code red is now code green, which just means the hospital is back open and ready to uh, provide care to all. Let's just leave it at that. You know, everything's going well here in Vegas. It's, uh, you know, listen, it's a shame. This is a city of entertainment. Um, you know, it survives, lives, and uh, works uh, on the entertainment industry, uh, which we all know has probably been the most greatly affected amongst other industries. And so um, there is a slowing of that. Um, the emergency departments and the hospitals are actually filling back up uh, with, with patients afflicted with COVID-19 disease. So um, I was just told this morning uh, that uh, the hospital that I practice in is one of the highest uh, in our system in holding and taking care of COVID-19 patients. So uh, sad to report back to you too. Uh, that uh, there is, again, a rise and uptick in hospitalized patients. Yeah, well, you know, what's, what, what the news media is putting out right now is that uh, the U.S. has reported 1 million new virus cases in the first 10 days of November alone. Uh, experts say the U.S. could reach 200,000 cases daily, which it already has reached. Texas now has become the first state to hit 1 million COVID infections. And the U.S. now is at an all-time high for COVID-19 hospitalizations. Now, this goes against, to a large degree, when we last had you on the show, when you were seeing minimal activity in Vegas, to now it's flying. So what we've gone through is we all know that the... Pull up. Pull up. I don't know if it's going to work. It's been a bad day, Doc. Bad day. Bad, bad Wi-Fi. Yeah, the country was not run correct. Yeah. Can you hear me okay, guys? We got you back now. Yeah, you dropped for like 15 seconds at a time. I'm sorry. Okay, let not me good. just go back to what I said. Experts say the U.S. could reach 200,000 cases daily. We've already reached 200,000 cases in one day. Texas has become the first state to hit 1 million COVID infections. The U.S. now is at an all-time high for COVID-19 hospitalizations, just like you explained, Doc, in Las Vegas. Now, this goes against what we last had you on the show when we were in stage one, which we're still in. Now we're in still in stage one, but it's become worse. So, Doc, question before you answer all the questions, along with the answer you're going to give. As citizens, as people trying to be safe, should we still mandate and follow the safety and protocol of stage one as far as really keeping everything exactly the way it's been? We can't lax. I think lax is what's gotten us here to where we are now. Please comment on what I just said. Well, listen, without trying to choose a side or, or, or go you know, in any specific direction, I'm going to follow kind of what I think the majority or the mass of science is kind of teaching us. So, you know, listen, I think we're all safest to wear a mask uh, when outside of our probably our own home. Um, I think the social distancing, the hand hygiene, and just the general awareness is probably what's going to continue to 
help um, blunt this uh, COVID-19. I don't know uh, what the peak will be, and I don't know what the bottom will, when the bottom will come. But I think, like you just said, um, you know, we've all got to have a huge awareness going into this fall uh, and this winter in order just to, to blunt the response. That's just that's just proven. So, with that being said, we're coming up on the Thanksgiving holiday. Okay, I'm in a situation just myself, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody coming up. We'll talk about it again in a couple of weeks. But the holidays are starting. The gatherings are starting. Families are going to get together. Families have been told, just like with my 92-year-old mom, to stay distanced. I've, I've not hugged her in months. I've gone in the house. I've you haven't hugged distance. your mother? Once, wow, once Bruce. When I was, once when I was tested and I got home right after the test it, 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 with a mask on. If people don't know, the, the relationship that you have with your mother is, is unlike many uh, other relationships. That's why it took me off guard. I'm, I'm surprised that you've been that committed. I mean, good for you, but I'm sure that's killing you. It's killing me. I love my mom. She's yeah. my best friend, you know, and just it's 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 a very strong relationship. But one we've had to deal with. And of course, now we're going into back into the gatherings. Uh, I have three caregivers working with my mom who have family gatherings. We all have situations. Doc, with everything going on and people trying to be safe, but still wanting to see their loved ones alone. I predict and I'm not a doctor by any standards whatsoever, but I predict. Uh oh. I'm guessing he predicts a huge uptick in cases, and I guess that's the question. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, while Bruce sorts his internet issues, allow me to ask a, a couple of questions quick. Um, with more uh, infections, uh, people contracting the virus. Uh, We're going to see do, do, All right, now Bruce is back. I'm here. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, we, no. we, we, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what's going on with your, your internet today, Buff, but it, it's unfortunate. We'll try to work through it. But uh, what I was saying, Doc, is that now that we've had more people have the virus and recover, do we know anything more about what life is like post-COVID? Is it uh, something that we're seeing where people are, are having longstanding uh, effects? Because I know a couple of people that have complained about not feeling healthy uh, you know, months after having the virus. Is, is there any information that we can go on based uh, with these people, what life is supposed to be like or what we could expect post-COVID? So a so couple of great questions. Um, you know, we can take it from the mild to the more severe form of the recovery. So, you know, the good news is the majority of the people that still uh, contract the illness and recover, recover completely and feel well. I mean, as we all know, many, if not most people, get a very asymptomatic or mild or mild to moderate form of the disease. Um, probably nothing more than upper respiratory congestion, maybe, you know, some lower respiratory symptoms such as cough and maybe a few gastrointestinal systems and some body aches and fever, but they recover and do very well. And within a short time frame, 10, 15, 20 days, feel generally right back to their usual self. And that's the very good news. So what have we learned? We've also learned that there's a smaller subset of individuals that go on and have this more kind of chronic uh, condition that, that lasts, unfortunately, weeks, months. And the condition is fatigue. It's people telling me they take naps that never took naps before. It's people telling me that they become short of breath so much easier with so much less exertion mm -hmm. than they did in the past. Yeah. And then it goes on to even the more severe form where I do know a few people, unfortunately, um, that they've really had definitive uh, chronic lung or pulmonary injury. So their lung uh, anatomy is now changed for, we think, probably a very long time, if not forever. And their lungs look like they're probably not going to recover. And these people almost have like a, like a smoking disease type of lung pattern now. Um, and unfortunately, these people are going to have longer term issues. I mean, finally, the, the world that uh, Bruce and I live in uh, with the athletes and all, just everyone that's athletic or just, you know, I'll say wants to get out there and exercise, you know, there's this concern about can you get these longer term infections in the heart? And, and we call that myocarditis. And, uh, you know, that's all out there. We don't know the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we look for it in these people that come back and complain about symptoms. But for the whole gamut from almost complete recovery to a severe form of long-term illness exists. Right. Yeah. Just a real quick follow-up, Bruce, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, I know a, a former UFC fighter that uh, was in peak physical shape, was preparing for a fight, got COVID, and he got COVID probably in, in June or July, and we're sitting here in November, and he feels like he can't roll 
the way that he used to. He can't run. He can't do any cardiovascular work uh, to the level that he, he once did. And we're talking about a guy that, I mean, completely lived a, a clean life and always took care of his body. And he goes to the doctor, and they're like, your lungs look fine. Uh, I don't know if he's had his heart looked at, but wh what would you suggest for someone that's in a situation like that where th they're suffering these issues, Doc, but their lungs at least look normal? Yeah, listen, no names mentioned. Uh, I followed probably a similar, if not the same person in the UFC who's a peak uh, ath athlete, and I uh, was in the intensive care unit, uh, even was on hemodialysis. Um, and he still had a very slow, I'll say, but positive and up, you know, uphill, but, but, a, but a recovery, but very, very slow. It's been since July, and here we are out in November. Um, look, there's a lot of tests. The, you know, the physicians are out there. They're, they're doing CAT scans of the lungs. They're doing echocardiograms of the heart. We're even doing M cardiac MRI of the heart, um, you know, trying to understand some of the pathology and some of the changes. Um, and sometimes we come up with an answer on some of these diagnostic and imaging modalities, and sometimes we don't. It's just a clinical diagnosis that, uh, you know, that, that you're going to get better when you get better. And I know everyone hates to hear that right. because that's not an answer. No. Right. That's, that is an answer right now. For but we don't people. know. We don't know. It's no, so new know. when you think about it. Like, well, think about this. virus is completely different. Go ahead, Bruce. Sorry. There's, no, there's also the unknown, too. There was an article that came out yesterday. It's been out, it talked about before, but now they're talking mental after effects, you know, uh, uncontrollable hallucinations, uh, effects on the mind. Um, it's crazy, Doc. I mean, the only way to avoid this is to avoid it, is not to get it, which means all the safety and protocol we have in. Doc, I know I came off the internet, but did you agree with me that during the holidays we can expect a spike because of the, maybe yeah, the lack listen, of, yeah, protocol listen, getting together? I mean, listen, everyone's put the awareness out there that we should limit travel, and even when we get together with our families, do we eat outside? Do we not share the, the same table? Do we not share the same food? I mean, these are just all things that can completely go against the traditions that we all enjoy of, of Thanksgiving and then the, and then the, the December holidays. Um, you know, will, will we see a, something, an inflection point that, uh, that goes up from this? I mean, it's all, all logic would tell you yes. Um, and I don't know how to bet against that, to be honest with you. If you're from where I'm from, I implore you people in the upper Midwest, do not go outside and eat your Christmas dinner because COVID <laughs> won't be the issue. It'll be hypothermia. Yeah, it'll be yes. hypothermia. Hey, right, Doc, Your dinner will be cold. Your right, dinner exactly. Will be cold. exactly. So let, let, let's just touch, before we get into the vaccine they talked about, let's just touch on a restaurant, sure. okay? We're all going a little stir crazy being home to a certain extent, depending on your lifestyle and what you do. There's other people out there risking themselves, whether they're frontline workers or people just maybe running a, a gym, you know, coming in contact with various people, no matter what safety and protocol is being put into effect in the gym or let's say a martial arts studio or whatever. And people have to stay in business and I want them to more than ever, of course. But right. eating at a restaurant, okay, they come up to you, they have a mask on or maybe they have a mask and a shield on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Come on, Buff. Pull through. Okay, and they're all doing it. Really? Again? Yeah. Am I here? Am I here? You're, you're back right. now. You're, I'm so sorry, guys. Whatever. I'm having a COVID-19 internet issue here. So with that being said, with the protocols in the restaurant, you're sitting there, whether it's with a date. You know, let's say I'm with a, a friend, okay? Let's say I'm with three other people that I know are safety and protocol very strongly, like immediate family. And we decide to go to a restaurant, and we're sitting there, and we're following all the things. How do you feel about eating out at a restaurant? knowing that people are walking by, knowing all, all the stuff going in and out over eight hours, how do you feel about the safety factor in this day and age of eating in a restaurant outside? Well, listen, we, we all want to get out of our house. And, uh, you know, everyone wants to go to the gym. They want to go to a restaurant. They want to go to a coffee uh, shop. Those are the three most common places that we probably socialize. And if you looked at the news this morning, I'm, I'm glad you, you led me right into this, uh, Bruce. If you look at the leading news this morning from AMA, American Medical Association, and American College of Emergency Physicians, uh, leading headline, study says restaurants, gyms, and coffee shops rank high as locations for coronavirus transmission outside of the home. So the three favorite places that we just mentioned that we all want to go to just to get a break in our day or get a change of the pace um, look like they're turning into the three highest risk factors for all of us to contract the COVID-19 illness. So, right. you know, how do you balance that? I don't know. I mean, you know, am I going to tell people they can't go to their gym because then they can't exercise, so then they're not healthy. Can I, you know, are we going to say you can't go to get enjoy your favorite beverage? 
And are we going to say you can never go out to a, a restaurant? I don't know how to balance it. I, I think um, this is just what's the risk, what's the reward, and what kind of caution can you use when you're trying to eat or drink your favorite beverage? Well, then with the caution to use, what you're saying is don't do it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be 100% safe, you just can't do it. I hope you have a home that you enjoy socializing in, and I hope it's safe, and I will drink my puncher's chance in the privacy of my own home. Boo! Does that, Boo! Does that count? What a does shameless that plug. What, what was does that? that count as his favorite beverage? Favorite I think beverage? so. I Not saw him reaching for it. <laughs> okay. Not my favorite beverage, my favorite spirit. How's that? There you go. <laughs> favorite spirit. All hey, right. I, I, I have a, another quick question, Doc, and, and see if you uh, have had any information on something like this. I remember when the uh, virus first hit and, and they said uh, certain uh, people of color were more uh, susceptible to the illness and, and people needed to be wary of that information. Um, another thing that I, I thought about recently was, you know, these post uh, COVID effects in, in, in ethnic background. I remember when um, my wife was pregnant, we had to run a test because we're both sc of Scandinavian descent to see if our son would be uh, affected or higher susceptible to something like cystic fibrosis. Is, is there any sort of information on that, you know, post COVID or are people of certain ethnicities more susceptible to those complications than uh, say others? I think, uh, again, a lot of the literature continues to evolve, uh, but certainly there has been what looks like some uh, evidence that shows that certain ethnicities or even certain blood types we've all read about uh, mm -hmm. seem to be more susceptible to either, um, you know, end up uh, contracting uh, the COVID-19 and or having a more severe course. And, and, and of course, we've read about, you know, up to 14% higher in the African American population, maybe in the Hispanic population, we've read about the different blood types like AB that seem to have a worse course. Um, so again, I, I think you guys both know, and you've mentioned it, the, the literature will continue to evolve. The science will continue to gather data. That's the best thing we do is yeah. we gather data. So what we know today is so much better than last January and what we'll know in six months and a year from now will be so much better than today. Um, you know, I know you guys are going to lead way into some of the early vaccine uh, uh, reports that are coming out, and we'll discuss it. But imagine a year from now how much different this discussion could be. Right. It's going to be, it's going to be widely different because now, you know, with Pfizer just releasing the incredible data that they, re uh, they released on how the vaccine they're working on is more than 90 percent effective in preventing coronavirus in infections. Then scientists are warning the vaccine might only be 55 percent effective. It's also a vaccine that's going to require two doses a protection that kicks in 20 days after the initial dose. And the fact of the matter is, with all the amount of people need to be tested worldwide, much less nationwide, how many people can we possibly vaccinate within a year? I mean, they're maybe not even half the population. Then you have the other series of moms and dads that don't believe in vaccines for their kids, don't get them for anything, that will refuse to get them, which is going to continue. So this is not a guarantee. Doc, if you had no, a... If, correct. If you, if you had a crystal ball, okay, <laughs> if you had a crystal ball, and, and we all have them, right, because we all have opinions, what is your guesstimate, not to hold into you, do you think we're going to be back to some form of normality a year from now, or is it going to be longer? I, I say we're going to be wearing masks for years. I, I don't see that changing. Yeah, listen, I, I think we all want to have the answer, and I think it's mostly, like you just said, everyone's collective opinion. Um, I do feel that it will be years um, before we begin to feel like we're uh, working in a community and as a world normally. Um, you know, does that mean we won't go back to certain things such as work and, and all these other entertainment activities? Um, I don't have the exact season or, you know, what year or what, what holiday we can go back. Um, but I think you're right, Bruce. I think we wear masks. We continue to use all of our social distancing and precautions for years. I think it becomes more of a habit for us. Uh, for the future. Um, I think that uh, as we hopefully get a hold of this virus, we learn so many lessons, but then who's to say we don't get another type of virus in five years and in 10 years? It seems like about every seven to 10 years, something comes along. This one, uh, this COVID-19, unfortunately, uh, tended to be very highly transmissible, which led it to this worldwide outbreak. I mean, I just read literally today, uh, worldwide or actually new daily cases in the USA, 132,000 uh, cases, uh, which is a new daily high. Uh, hospitalizations up to 62,000. 
Um, you know, so we're, we're getting into the numbers that, you know, everyone says, all right, when do we hit herd immunity? Those are the famous kind of two words we all hear, herd immunity. You know, herd immunity can take a decade. Um, you know, listen, herd immunity, when you listen to the experts speak, is anywhere from 60 to 70% of a population. You know, I think there's about 7 billion people plus uh, on planet Earth right now. You just have to do some real quick math to figure out that's a long time to get to that level. Real, real quick, I know you got to go, Doc, but I just wanted to fit this in on that sort of topic. Uh, have you heard anything about reinfection rates? Is this something that's going to evolve? And, and, you know, can I feel confident that if I had COVID-19 that I'm not likely to get it again or can I get it again? You know, great question. So listen, up until uh, this last couple of months, we didn't talk about reinfection because we just didn't know, right? People were getting infected right now. All of us uh, physicians or people following these patients to get infected say, hey, look, after you've been infected and after that first 10 days uh, of which hopefully you're resolved and you feel well and we kind of say get back out there to work or whatever your daily activity is, um, we tell you that maybe you have a 90 day kind of uh, uh, time frame of which you've had an antibody and we think you're safe. But the question is, does the 90-day antibody resolve? Does it, does it begin to trend down? And then you become more susceptible to reinfection. I think time's going to tell us just like we learned. Um, so what happens this fall, this winter? I don't know. But you know, people that probably had this infection last January, February, March, I don't think probably carry the same um, antibody level within their system um, this, this fall, nine months later, that they had last fall, you know, 10, mm -hmm. 15, 20 days after. You know, now to talk about the, the, the uh, vaccine just for a moment, without mentioning the companies, um, you know, there's, there's one that Bruce already mentioned that's kind of led the way that thinks it's got about a 90% or greater um, efficacy. And, and uh, you know, listen, it's going to probably get released uh, in 2020. There'll be, um, they said up to 50 million doses can be released this year and up to 1.5 or 1.3 billion doses in 2021 is their goal. Um, it's interesting. It's a, a kind of what's called a messenger RNA um, to deliver a coronavirus protein to your body when they give you the vaccine, which then kind of stimulates or, or gets your body to build the antibodies so that when you do get exposed to the real COVID-19, you've already got this antibody. Um, this is a brand new technology. That's why it's really interesting to those of us just trying to follow it. This wasn't a technology used in the past to build vaccines. So um, I think there's a lot of good literature that's going to come out and I've got a lot of good reporting that's going to come out in the next several months. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it's exciting that we have something to at least hope for. Um, you know, you'd hope going into 2021, this is something that becomes more and more available to, you know, all the specific populations that we all want to see it get to first and then obviously spread out to the rest of the country and the world. Doc, quick question. The vaccine comes out. Are you first in line? Will you get it or you want to wait to see how it you know, I, I, I got to be honest with you, I have, to, I have to go with the science. And so, yes, um, my answer is this. Um, if they followed through phase one, phase two, phase three trials, oh, yeah, yeah. If they've gone through the trials, which I think they have, uh, I don't think anyone has cut corners. I think this is much too serious of a matter to cut corners. Um, I, I do believe uh, in the fact that we were able to focus so much um, person power and so much um, technology and so much money just has been poured into this. But I do think we could develop the right vaccines. Um, and I do think, you know, myself personally being on the front lines, working in an emergency department, um, being exposed to travel uh, like you, Bruce, I do think it's important that uh, I get the vaccine. Um, you know, they've been following the patients out about two months is the median after the vaccine trials. And that's kind of what the FDA recommends. And that will come up this November here in about two more weeks that these all these individuals have been followed. And that is the tracking time to look for adverse events. So okay. they're supposed to release information on that. So we'll know what are, if any, the adverse events, mild or moderate or severe. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's a concern of mine. I, I'm going to sit back and wait a couple months until after. Um, the concern we do that again. Yeah. But here's another thing. You get the vaccine, you come in contact with the virus. Your body doesn't get infected. Can you be still asymptomatic and give it to somebody else, even though it's not in you? Is the virus still shedding off you or whatever? That's another big question. Has that been answered? That, is, that, that just came up in the reports this morning, too. Great question. Um, let me just 
Yeah, we lost your handsome face. Yeah, there, I think I think he's answering a text message. There you go. We, we, yeah, we gotta, we gotta let the man go here in a second. No, I got I got a few minutes. Um, just, tell him to tell, just tell him the open heart surgery can wait a couple minutes. You're on his time right yeah. now. Yeah, the, 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 the R is crashing, but I'm gonna come in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> no, listen, the asymptomatic individuals. We don't know where the vaccine works in that. We don't we don't know if the vaccine how it responds in individuals with mild to severe case. Um, there's a lot of great questions, and like we're asking these questions today. We'll probably have these answers in three or four months or six months, and then we'll we'll be moving on to the next set of questions like we always do. Well, we're hey, gonna listen, have you, I know we're, we're further along than we were last yeah. time we spoke. Absolutely. That's no question. And you know what? We're going to have you on before the end of the year for a little holiday update, and hopefully we've got more answers before then too, Doc. The main thing I want to tell you is I want you to stay safe because you're on the front line, bro. You're on the Much front line dealing with everything. Please stay safe. You're not just a doctor. You're a good friend of mine, and I want you to stay safe. And also, congratulations, because people realize everything you've helped with the safety and protocol, the UFC, being the pioneer you are, a COVID pioneer in sports, people are after you. You got the, you got the NFL after you. You got everybody after you. They want a piece of the dock because they want to be safe, too. So, well, listen, but, I've been fortunate uh, with the NFL. I've been fortunate enough to work a little bit with it's called their Neurotrauma Consultant Program here in Las Vegas. So listen, it's been exciting. That's a great, great uh, organization. I, I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with the, the safety, uh, both for just the players and just the health and safety of the uh, COVID compliance. They've done a very yeah. good job. So, very cool. um, and of course, listen, Bruce, with the UFC, I think we've done a great job and uh, yes. you stay safe. You're traveling all the time to work with us. And yep. you know, we have a busy November, December. I know, and we have people testing positive, just like anybody else, you know? Got to do what you got to do. We're right? doing our best to keep the positives out, and we keep all the negatives in. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Doc. Now go back to saving more lives, just not saving us on this time radio, okay? Seriously. I appreciate you both, and I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. All right, my Thanks, brother. Doc. I'll see you this weekend. Will I see you Saturday? I will be there Saturday night. All right, I'll see you with bells on. Let's have a good time. Take, take care of yourself. Stay safe. And do what you've been doing, man. Save those lives, protect people, not just in COVID, but everything else you do. So much respect for you, Doc. So much All respect. Right. And I appreciate you guys uh, giving me an opportunity to speak with you. It's been great. You got it. We'll have you back. Right. As always, you're our doctor. <laughs> All right, team. <laughs> Cheers. See, See you later. And there we go. We're, we're wow. informed once again. Yeah, we're informed, and he's great, and, uh, and may, it's an awesome guy. We've become good friends over the years. But uh, friggin' scary stuff, TJ. What he yeah, just I mean, said. What he just said. To, to, me, to, to, me, to me, this is more hopeful. This is the most hopeful I've, I've been after one of these uh, interviews uh, with Dr. Jeff. I think this is our third time having him uh, on the program. Um, I'm hopeful for the future. I'm scared about the present. There are more answers I'm with you. The holiday season has me a little concerned. Um, I'm traveling uh, throughout that time, mm -hmm. um, a couple times internationally. Uh, but, I mean, it's kind of like what he said at the, the front. Like, understand what it is. Take the precautions that you need. But right. at, at this point, like, what, what? I need to get paid. You need to get paid. We need to pay others. You know, so it's like, I don't know. It, it's... Uh, I hate to say this because in fighting, when I've, I've talked to aggressive fighters that sometimes get too aggressive, um, they say, like, I have to have a controlled aggression, right? right. They have to have their offensive output uh, mitigated with, with common sense so they don't gas out. I feel like we have to do that with caution. So we have to have controlled caution at this point, Bruce, because if you, if you choose to listen to the words of Dr. Jeff and, and really, really, really listen, I think most people are going to go, well, I'm not going to go anywhere unnecessary. And that's, that's what I think you need to do. It comes down to what is necessary. For some people, that's going outside and going for a walk. For some people, that's going to the coffee shop. I get it. But you got to figure out what is necessary for your life, and you got to be as cautious and careful as possible. No, I get it, too. And, um, you know, if you read between the lines what he said, and even though he answered it very directly, he's basically saying if you want to be safe, stay home. Yeah. If you want to be safe, wear a mask, keep your distance. Yeah. If you want to be safe and look at the future, we're in this for years. There's no yeah. ending. There's no ending of this next year. There's a slow down, there's whatever, but mass and protocol. Well, it's just um it's great news. It's 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 I'm not well, happy about what I heard, but I, I, I didn't you. expect anything different. Right. I didn't expect anything different. It, it goes back to something I saw in about 
April or May. Uh, these digital billboards, digital signs over the top yeah. of the freeways that we have here. Do you remember what it said? Well, at first it said, wash your hands, which I just giggled at because at the early part of this pandemic, everything seemed like so bizarre only. And now I just believe like anything you tell me is probably true because it's 2020. But I, I remember these signs saying, wash your hands. And it's like, that's ridiculous. It's like, take off your shoes. Like what, what other manners are they going to tell you uh, to do? But beyond that, the sign also said, help slow the spread of COVID-19. It didn't say stop the spread. It said help slow the spread. And to me, that language yeah, alone, last, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, to me, th that, that language alone of helping slow the spread, that is basically the, the powers that be, knowing how serious this is, Bruce. And, and, and to me, they knew from the beginning that we were in a very long haul with this thing. Yeah, they knew, and I won't get back to the leaders not leading properly because I've said that every show, and I guess I just said it again this show. But um, with that being said, last night I got a public safety alert for the first time ever about COVID-19. Did you get it on your iPhone? I did not. It said, L.A. City, COVID-19 cases are increasing. Please wear a mask and social distance. Get tested if you have symptoms or might have been exposed. L.A. City offering oh. free testing with results in less than 24 hours. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't get that one in particular, but I got one from Anaheim. Uh, probably a month ago, maybe two months ago, when I was just yes. literally on my way somewhere driving through Anaheim. Um, I, I assume it's similar to like the Amber Alert system where, yeah, you know, thing. they set up a, a perimeter where it's like, look, anybody in this area with a cell phone is going to get that uh, notification. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that notification. I don't know how it's supposed to make me feel. Um, it's a, it's a but, notification of the same notification we're getting daily when you right. open up the internet. But what, the what I think it does serve to do, Bruce, is it's a constant reminder of how serious this is. Because as we live here in Southern California, we're still on a stay-at-home order. I think people forget that. Yes, things are open. But we're still supposed to stay home unless you have to leave for something necessary. An escape room? Not necessary. No. But, they, but they are open. Um, yeah. Movie theaters? Certain areas? Not necessary but they are open. They are so, open, movie theaters? Some of them. I think they may have closed again, but yeah, they, they have been open. Um, I, know, I know that uh, my friend who's a, a martial arts dojo owner at Manhattan Beach, she just got the okay this week to open up her right. dojo again. Which and I know doesn't make Orange, any sense because we're getting record numbers. doesn't make any in sense. Orange, in Orange County, they've had dojos and restaurants and everything mm -hmm. open for a long time. Again, it's like each city's running on its own accord. I'm happy in her case that she's able to open because she's right. you know saving her business, which she works yeah. so damn hard to keep alive and uh, is a great business. And I, I say that for everybody out there, but you know what? Hopefully everything is a, everything goes smoothly and they don't get shut down again. I mean, I hate to be a business owner, like in that case, and I'm open, I'm closed. I'm right. open. I'm closed. I'm spending money to open. I'm spending money to close. I'm open. I'm closed. Now I'm closed. So, you know? so I'm, I'm sure some people are hearing like, what does that mean? Stay at home order. And then these things are open. The way that I understand it is the governor is allowed to issue a mandate in an order of any kind. That doesn't mean that the counties have to follow it. Right. Exactly. It's all, it's almost like the federal government and the state level government. You even have a layer to that when it comes to state government and county government and all the way down to city government. Um, it seems odd to me that you can override the governor, but at the same time, I'm with you, Bruce. Like, what are we supposed to do? Are we, are we literally just going to pull up anchor on any semblance of small business owners making money if they deal with the public? You know, I, want every, I want every small business owner and large business owner, but in respect to the small business owners, have been hit so hard. Right. I want them to be able to open their business. I want them to follow a safety and protocol to keep their business successful. And hopefully they do it in such a way and, and abide by the ultimate rules of safety and protocol to keep their business open and the people safe that go into their gyms or restaurants or whatever the case might be. All it takes in this world of publicity is one bad case. Mm -hmm. Oh, ridden with COVID-19 and boom, your business Mm -hmm. is damaged yeah right? so but that's the chance we take every day people are this is survival of the fittest tj this right the, right this is the darwinian theory of evolution at its peak yeah of of, of reality but, but getting getting back to what you were talking about with that message i feel that that message is a constant reminder to people that live here who go okay we're still at work we stay at home mandate things are closed but they're open because you look around and you see some familiar things like people going out to a certain extent, all of those examples, Bruce, cause us to go, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a well, deal. I haven't got sick. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. 
it's a big deal if you pay attention to the news, but so many people are relaxing out there, and that's why we're having the issues we're having, and I hope that they do pay attention. I'll give you a little example of uh, my, my, my boy, Rupert, 12 years old, just so, so intelligent. He said to Kristen uh, yesterday, the day before, Mommy, because they can't go to school. I know your mm -hmm. kids can go to school, right? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Uh, L.A. County is the only one where kids can't go to school. Yeah, I live in L.A. State. County. Okay, so there I can. So L.A. County, where Kristen lives here near me, and Rupert says, Mommy, can we move? I want to go back to school. Now, it breaks my heart because of my love for my family and my neighbors, you know, who I've been with together for so many years, 15, 20 years. They're actually considering moving so the kids can go back to school, maybe to Orange County or maybe to another area out of L.A. County. So the kids can go back to school because they're noticing the effect on their kids. Oh, not, not going back to school. Nothing could be harder on my child than this. I'm not. Yes, I'm not being dramatic when I say that. That was so, my question. My next question to you was, yeah. I'm sure you understand this. Yeah, no, I understand completely because um, I've seen the mental um, wear and tear uh, on my son. Like, hey, you can't. I mean, he's nine. He has so much energy. I mean, I wish we could bottle it, Bruce. I really wish we could bottle it because I would be the first one. I take that vaccine before the COVID vaccine. If it Seriously, came out. But, you know. But you know, the thing is, though, the effects it has on a nine-year-old, much less my boys who are twelve and fifteen. Right. Socially, on, just socially, on, on I mean, their social skills yeah. for the future. TJ, like, it like, kills me. What What terrifies me, Bruce, is if we don't go back to school soon. If we don't go back until next year, like think about this: the last time my son was in school, it was the third quarter of second grade. He might not go back, step foot in a classroom until first, second, third, or fourth quarter of fourth grade. Think about who you were as a kid when you were in second grade. Yeah, yeah. And then just like that, socially, expect them to act like a fourth grader. TJ, let me ask you a question. Um, do you know if this is true? Are there private schools that are private funded schools that are open that you can send your kid to a private school and you can go to school with other kids? So to me, I don't know for a fact. This is what my brain would say, because getting back to what we're talking about, state level, county level, if a county says that a school cannot be open, mm -hmm. even if you're a private school, I don't think you can be open because the, the, the county is issuing a mandate based on the type of business that you are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no jokes, I wanna, gyms, schools, yeah. et cetera. I want to check on that because honestly, if it came down to that versus moving or whatever, I'll send those kids to private the, school. The buffer scholarship in full effect. I'll send those kids to private. I mean, school. I, 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 yeah. I personally, I, I, I mean, it's so hard because as a parent, it's like you never want your child to be susceptible to illness. No. But at the same time, I, I think that a lot longer he's going to have a different illness altogether. That's what I'm worried about, and also, yeah. if, and, I'm, and when I, I want to reinstate something. If that's the case, and, and whether I work with them and, and we both all together send them whatever, whatever needs to be done, I would do. You know me, TJ. I would right. do it. So based on, on Kristen and her husband, Chris, agreeing to things, it's not my decision. I'm their godfather. Right, okay? right. This is their decision. Sure. But those schools have better be friggin' safe, okay? But you how safe I will go be, as, as safe as possible, just but, as safe as going out to a rush. It's, it's a risk. He, here's it's a problem. risk. I'm a gambler, but this isn't the gamble I want right. to take. Here's the problem with me with kids in school. They're kids. Yeah, and I, I've I said know. forever. I mean, the, the first thing that I learned when I became a parent and my kid was leaving the home to go to daycare or school, he's a freaking Petri dish. Like, I know. Every time he would go into a new facility – both my wife and I would be down for a couple of days. Oh, TJ, it, I've, I've seen you get sick so many times. Right. I've seen other parents get sick. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. And, it, and it's like, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm not necessarily saying that's a foregone conclusion that everybody's going to get sick when kids are back in school. But right. I, I, I struggle. I struggle to see how it wouldn't spread that way because kids are kids, man. They're just kids. We're faced with so many different decisions here. We're faced with the holidays coming up. Everything we discussed um, was having the Thanksgiving talk yesterday with my family, which obviously there's no, there's no family gathering for us. It's, it's hopefully mom, Brian, I, and maybe one or two other people because I'm not going to open up the doors because of my mom. You know? Yeah. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. facing We're all facing situations we have to do with individually. Let's go forward a little uh, economic talk here. Again, TJ, last week, Another 751,000 Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. That's on top of the 800 plus thousand that I mentioned last week's show. Not good. 
not good. Now, the other thing, the big news from last week is the fact that the election took place. We have a new president elect. And you sure? President to be, well, that's I mean, I've seen go. some different news online. I don't know. <laughs> well, we know the one person is very upset, President Trump. I honestly think come Jan 20th or whatever the date is, they're going to have to pry him out of the White House. So, I, get, I guess I wait. I can see him holding on to the doorposts, you know, with his heels dug into right. the ground. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the movie scene for sure. I actually saw something yeah. online. I don't know how real it is because we live in this world where like what is real and what isn't. But I, I heard that if if president elect Biden would like to move in on January 20th, uh, president Trump would have to vacate early because of his exposure to COVID. They believe that they would have to do extensive sanitizing and disinfecting that they wouldn't normally have to do. Uh, yeah. and, and I'll tell you right now, there's absolutely no way Trump is going to leave a second before January 20th. We have been experiencing a reality show in politics. I'm sorry to say, uh, for the last year or two. Four years, maybe, <laughs> um, in the way that, you know, things have been handled and the way that his reaction um, since the president elect was announced in Biden. Uh, we're going to see more of this because President Trump is self-admittedly probably going to do everything he can. Uh, the recounts are being done. Right. Um, an analysis, of the recount shows that. And again, I'm not saying who I voted for or whatever. I'm talking just news and reality here. Biden's win seems more decisive each day as the votes are counted, right. but they're still going to be counted. A situation happened yesterday where, did you hear about the Eric Trump, uh, President Trump's son, um, became a bit of a uh, attention getter on Twitter after urging people to vote one week after the polls were closed on Twitter? What? Yeah. That's, you can't do that. He tweeted for people in Minnesota, your home state, to get out and vote one week after the 2020 election. So I'm wondering if that wasn't a error because it, it says here 1110 his no, no, tweet is tweet is Minnesota let, let, let get out. Let me finish. Okay, let me finish. Right, let me finish. Right. I wonder if that wasn't some, so I use a program called TweetDeck. Are you familiar okay. with this? No. So TweetDeck allows you to uh, manage multiple Twitter accounts on one giant dashboard. So you and don't have program, to keep logging program in. for when they're going to be released. Right, yeah, exactly. So I wonder if they didn't so you said it was like a week. I wonder if they just clicked on the 10th when they meant to click on the third. And that's let's, how let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Cause I can't see how anyone no, can make that kind no. of mistake. Let's it, go with that and give Eric well, Trump the benefit of the doubt that that's exactly what happened. It, it's the same thing with Herman Cain who passed away. He, he had a tweet come out that was pro Trump after he passed away. Okay. So I, I assumed it was scheduled. Um, but with all that in mind, like this is like, this is why politics and, and the news has been like one gigantic Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live bit. Um, in Pennsylvania, Trump supporters showed up to chant, stop the count, stop the count. In Arizona, the same time, Trump supporters were chanting, count the vote, count the vote. How do you figure this one? Well, he was losing in Arizona. You know, and, and Biden was gaining in, in Pennsylvania. So stop counting the Biden votes, but count those Trump votes. All well, right. I think, I think President Trump is the, if I'm not mistaken, the 10th president out of the 46 presidents not to be reelected for a second term. And I know that yet has the final decision has to come out because I know people that bet on it, right? Mm -hmm. It was two to one, went up to six to one in Biden's favor. Oh, right and all over the, the place. Election. All, over, all the over the place. I was I was sending you live lines. Like it was of, crazy. Yeah, one of my buddies bet twenty G's on it, twenty thousand, and um, can't collect yet because yeah. even though it's president elect, yeah. they got to wait for all the recounts, right? Yep. No, I yeah. know. I, I and that's another thing too. I think a lot of people misconstrue when and how you win an election. Um, so did did you see Tito Ortiz? Did you see where he kind of fell uh, to some fire? Immediately after he was elected to the Huntington Beach City Council. Why, uh, you know, refresh me. I read something. Yeah. What was that? So he called for a recount of the California ballots because California was, quote, declared for Joe Biden prior to any of the count being done. Okay. Like polls closed at 8 and at 8 zero, zero, one second, CNN and all the networks projected that Joe Biden will win the state of California. So Tito felt offended by this because 
you clearly didn't count the votes. You've already declared the winner. What Tito right. fails to realize is that CNN and Fox and all the networks projecting a winner in a state is not the state officially saying, you win. Right, right. So he wants a recount, but he's like, the state actually hasn't issued who's won the state yet. That happens when the votes are certified on a certain day. A lot of states will certify their votes today as we record this on Veterans Day. Um, but I think Pennsylvania waits until the week of November or the week of Thanksgiving, rather. Sorry. Um, well, so, yeah, like a lot of people don't realize that when the, the networks project a winner, that's not the state endorsing any candidate as a winner gotcha. of their state. Well, listen, on one end, congratulations sincerely, Tito, and becoming the city councilman for Huntington Beach on your – he led political, all all political candidates. Career. He got more votes than anybody else. I believe it. I think it was a popular vote, a popularity vote that he got. Huh. It's similar to the way uh, Trump, uh, President Trump was elected to office on the TMZ vote. I right. Say. So let me tell you this. My uh, studio sits in a city uh, called Garden Grove. Okay. Um, two houses down from where I'm sitting, there was a sign for Tito Ortiz for city council. You see the issue with that? He's not. That's Garden Grove. That's not Huntington Beach. Right. But yeah. that guy likes Tito, so he got the sign, put it in his front yard. Hey, however the ball floats, whatever makes your boat float, go for it. Right. The fact is, it he's just, in the position. I hope he does his math better during his term as, as a councilman, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I just and find you know it what? Let's, let's have Tito on the show. Let's have Tito on the show, and, you know, when everything calms down a little bit, I don't want to go into the well, Trump, Trump won type talks, but let's so have him on the show and, let me tell and see you how it's going for him. Let me tell you this. We've tried to get Tito four separate times. Yeah. He showed up zero separate times. That's Tito Ortiz. Know yeah. Him well. Yeah. Um, uh, Tito, Tito's a buddy, but I know him well. <laughs> and I'm not saying anything hey, bad. Hey, he's I'm in politics now. Maybe, maybe this would be a, a more worthwhile effort for him. I don't know. Maybe what you're saying is he's perfect for politics. <laughs> you know, so we'll I, you know, it's funny. I was going through my emails the other day. We were trying really hard to get Donald Trump on the show in 2000 and I think it was nine. Yeah. And we were close. Like, I mean, yeah. somewhat close. Like, I had contact with people. I have the emails. You right. know? But uh, my how things change. I, I can safely changed. say, Bruce, I can't get Donald Trump anymore. Well, I, I guarantee you won't be able to get him after this either, unless he calls and says he wants to be on the show. Yeah, no. Um, I don't think it, that's... Good. It's Trump's way or no way, I'm sure. Okay, let's get into a few news things here. Um, politics, everybody. You make your political choices and live by them. We made our political choice as a country, and now we have to live by it. And when the new president takes office, we need to, as we did for our current and previous, current to be previous president in Trump, and I'm the first one to say it, pledge allegiance to our leader, pledge allegiance to the president of the United States. And that's what we're going to do in January. Did I lose you? Did you no, I'm here. I'm here. I mean, that's, I'm that's here. We're gonna, that's what we're going to do as American I mean, citizens. Believe it or not, you've been saying that for the last four years. I have been. So why yeah. would you stop? You know what I mean? So. No. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. I, I, I mean, uh, again, I don't think without saying anything beyond anything other than the words coming out of my mouth, please don't infer anything. But I think that Donald Trump lost a lot of people that were his supporters towards the beginning of his presidency compared to the last simply because he, he did and continues to do things like he's doing right now. Um, you, no person in the world in the world, Bruce, can say, I will accept the results of this election if I win. And then he doesn't win, and he sh sure as shit is out there going, I don't accept the results of this election. You would get destroyed if you were anybody else. But Donald Trump, that, that makes people like him more, I guess. I don't know. Are you surprised? No, I'm not surprised. It's just it lacks logic. What lacks logic is every time I hear a speech and then I go to the news and I see the fact checks on the speech. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It, it, it's, it is I mean, think it about is. this, Bruce. We have more rampant conspiracy theories that can be disproven like that because we have access to Internet and, and knowledge that was never really on demand the way that it is now. And we have more and more people believing just complete bullshit than ever before. Sorry, yeah, I'm swearing yeah. now, but yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I couldn't put it any differently. It's 2020 right. and people think the earth is flat. Well, okay, Eddie Bravo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And you can't argue. It's hard to argue. It's not even an argument. It's a fact. It's a factual conversation. I can look at a camera from a space station mm -hmm. right now. 
Let's, unless you're, unless you're on the other bro. side, on the, unless you're underneath on the bottom, you can't see through. Of course, right. If you're on the flat side of the bottom yeah, side, you can't, right. can't see yeah. through. All right, a couple of news stories here. Things are catching fire. Electric car batteries now are are catching fire. More than yeah, I, I think I think people knew that, that was a thing. Um, yeah, but for some reason, it's 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 turning up more. It's being a big turnoff to buyers. Right. Um, is it is it a certain year and model? Or are we learning that maybe they, after a certain amount of time, these batteries just become more combustible? They've had instances where in September, BMW initiated a recall in the United States of 10 different BMW mini plug-in hybrid models because of the fire caused by debris that could have gotten into the battery cells manufacturing. A few days later, oh, wow. Hyundai announced it's recalling 6,700 Kona electric SUVs in the United States, among about 75,000 that model to be called recalled worldwide. How do you right? say that name? Hyundai? Hyundai? How do you say that? Hyundai. Hyundai. Well, if they fight in the octagon, I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it right from now on, too. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it, it's a hard word to say. Well, you're, you, know? you're dealing, you know what you're dealing with? You're dealing with lithium batteries, which is the same reason when you go to the airport, they ask you if you have any batteries in your right. luggage. Yeah. The I same mean, thing. We, we learn about these things. I remember that, that Samsung phone that would just blow up at altitude. Like well, the phone started on yeah. fire? I got another one for you. Mm. Ring. 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 Oh, the, the door doorbell thing? They recalled 350,000. Oh, no. They've recalled 350,000 smart doorbells because some of them are catching fire. It's on your house. It's on your house. Okay. At, at, least, at least in your car, you, you have a chance that it's not going to be in your garage when it happens. Here's you know what I mean? Problem. Here's the problem. People are installing the ring, not using the screws that come with the ring and using incorrect right. screws, right. which yeah. poses fire and burning hazards. So it's human error. So, so how do you correct that? Well, so you can't. I will tell you, you can't because my wife, that's literally what my wife does for a living. She's uh, uh, an engineering assistant for a major uh, industrial uh, supply uh, manufacturer. And what yeah. she does is she processes orders and she looks at what the orders are and what they're for. And then make sure that the client is not, you know, like if they're a food, uh, industrial food supplier and they're building a, an industrial refrigerator or something, she makes sure that all the steel is stainless steel and is food grade. But there are other times, Bruce, where she deals with a SpaceX or, uh, you know, something that, just like you said, where if the wrong screw is used and it's a different alloy or something and you ask that screw, to be responsible for blasting a spaceship into outer space, mm -hmm. if it fails, who knows what can happen? Right. And, and, and I will tell you this. She's done this job now for seven years. Constantly, even though they have these safeties and protocols, constantly she'll get a, a customer coming back going, well, this failed. And she's like, okay, what screw is it? And he goes, well, I don't know. I got it from my junk drawer. It doesn't so work that she, way. That what did she say? You're screwy? No, <laughs> no, she should. No, she just says you're she screwed. Should. You're screwed. You know, it, look, it, again, it's human error, and human error creates a lot of issues, just like well, whatever. People don't is. read directions, Bruce. I happen to be I, – I'm pretty good at that, but i got to be honest. When they get too overly detailed, I might yeah. skip a few. But I, I, I've learned to be good at that because of what we're talking about, because of the things that have happened when I wasn't good at it. So well, What I know it. about you, and this is a perfect example right now, you have a very nice microphone, beautiful microphone. Very expensive yeah, microphone. I don't have a microphone stand. <laughs> right, because, you know, this is the thing. You're not, Bruce, you're not the type of person to go break that microphone because you don't exactly know what you're doing. You'll here's go, the here's right, the stand. Right. And I look at it, all these pieces. I go, right. okay, I'm going to take 30 minutes to do this. I've been saying that to myself right. for the last three weeks. Right. But my point is this. You're, you're <laughs> smart enough to not do it rather than dumb enough to force yourself to do it and break it. And, and I think that is something. I lack that. You have no idea how many things I've completed completely destroyed because I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. When that happens, I do what I need to do. I hire a certain 12 and 15 year old that I know very close hey. to come over and set this thing up. There you okay? go. There, there you go. go. I, I'm the type of dude that will put together Ikea furniture with nails. That's all you need to know about me. Uh, let's go into some other news here. Uh, Mike Tyson, he had on his hot box and podcast, he had a friend of the show, Jeff Nowitzki on the head of uh, USADA mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Tyson, admitted in depth that he used a device called a whizinator to pass his tests in boxing where he would put in, you know, his wife's urine, yeah, uh, ba I'm baby's urine. Well, one time he said he used his wife's urine, if I read this correctly, but she was pregnant at the time. 
and he really worried about how that test was going to come back. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's a little surprising to me that he was able to pass for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I've seen a Wizenator before. Believe it or not, I've used a Wizenator before. Why not did you use not it? to pass a drug test, but I worked in a radio station where a Minnesota Viking was caught using a Wizenator. Oh, so you So we bought it. one. Yeah. And you know, it was it was weird. Um, but first off, as far as I know, when you are taking a drug test of that type, someone is supposed to come in and actually watch you That's do what it. I always thought it was supposed to be, yeah. And and from what I hear, it's not a like I'll stand next to the urinal, it's I'm going to stand next to you and look at and your watch, area. Watch you do what you're right. Doing, yeah. um, the second thing, the Wizenator, it makes a lot of noise. Oh, really? It's not quiet. Um, it's quiet when it's running for the most part, but you have to press a button. And when you press a button, if you don't cough while you do it, it sounds like, like that loud. Well, it could be back in those days in boxing. I'm not saying this is the case. They were just happy to have him go in take a wee and come back. And oh, get yeah. Something. I mean, the you know, let's go on, you know, that, that, that's what I will say that I remember plain as day when um, the Fertitas announced that USADA was coming in to oversee uh, the UFC. I remember sitting there going, why would you do this? You're right. just inviting a bunch of bad things. Like the idea for me, if I was running the business was, well, look, if someone tests positive, that's not on me. That's on the athletic commissions. They govern it. I'm just the promoter. That's a safe yep. bet. That's what every other MMA promoter does in the world. But they brought in USADA, which is different. And I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me. USADA, sure, it does some good things. But the good things mm -hmm. are maintaining is just normal. Right. But it's done a lot of bad things. And bad things meaning preventing a lot of things that people wanted to see in a timely manner, et cetera. But those are probably good things when you think about it. The whole morality of it all, if you believe in a level playing field, it's a good thing. Listen, I got no problem with you, Saad. I think what they're doing is a great service mm -hmm. and it's needed sure. and, and it has to be done. It's just at, at, when you are the company that benefits from putting on fights and you bring in something that can prevent those fights from happening, it doesn't make sense for the bottom line, but it's probably a smart move to, you know, uh, make your business stronger. You know, they're making the business stronger. They're doing what they need to do. It's all for good causes, and um, I'm all for it. I'm all for everything they do. Right. No question. We like a level uh, playing field, right, Bob? Exactly. Exactly. A couple of uh, little feel-good stories here. Uh, a stranger, um, car battery died Wednesday, last Wednesday, last week in Texas. So a guy pulls over to help him out, mm -hmm. wearing a mask, right? Mm -hmm. Jumps his car, make sure that he can, you know, get it all started and everything, and mm -hmm. leave. And, if, and somebody tells the guy, do you know who that was? It was Terry Bradshaw. Who? The guy that stopped with wearing the, the mask? Guy, the, no, the guy that stopped with the mask to help him out and, wow. and get his car started was Terry Bradshaw doing a nice human little th uh, favor for the guy. And the guy didn't even realize it was Terry Bradshaw until after he was told after he left. That's unbelievable. That reminds well, I, me of a, a story in my wife's hometown. Um, there was a guy on the side of the road. His car was broken down. A guy helped him and uh, went about his day and come to find out the guy that he helped on the side of the road, Warren Buffett. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Another few good story here. A 21-year-old man made history and uh, completed the Ironman Triathlon. And the reason he made history is he's the first person with Down syndrome to ever compete in the, wow. in the Ironman Triathlon. I love this story. Wow. It just goes to show you that you put your mind to it. You can do whatever you want. And for people that are not familiar with what an Ironman triathlon is, it's the peak of triathlons, a 2.4-mile swim, 112-mile bike ride, and a 26.2-mile marathon run in this Florida competition that took place in Panama City Beach. I'll, so, I'll tell you that's more fitness than I'll do in a year. I just, I just find this to be a beautiful story. I commend them. I think it's awesome, really awesome. I love hearing stories about this because it just shows you can do anything in life that you set your mind to, and that's what I'm all about. That's what we're all about here on the show as we talk. And before we sign off, a couple little collectible stories. I keep bringing up the fact of this 1981 box of Topps basketball with the, with the Michael Jordan, excuse me, with the um, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird rookie card, the three-panel yeah. rookie card that you have one of, we, we talked before. Uh, it doesn't count. It's torn apart. I sold this box for $1,100 uh, six years ago. Yeah. 
roughly. Mm-hmm. I've talked about the fact that it's sold for forty five hundred. I've talked about the fact that it's sold for sixty five hundred. Yeah. Now it's just sold for eighteen thousand, TJ. And Buffer, you need to buy one. I, we gotta I, stop talking I, about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something right now. You, you I, think it's, I think it's still a good investment. There's it's time to sale. buy one. Will you There's buy one, one please? Sale right now for eighteen. Right. Can you buy one so we can talk about how it's getting richer and you're getting richer? Because I feel like this one that got away is a sad way to sign off every week because this goes it's anything, been moving so much, Bruce, that so I feel like we've much. been talking about it every week. And if anything happens, like the 86 Fleer, which I remember I could buy a box for um, $200 and now sells for eight sixty eighty thousand, I could see this doubling in price within three years. Buy it. Got Christmas holidays coming up. We'll see what's up. <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. So, hey, it's time to celebrate all that puncher's chance uh, success. Yeah, I hear you. Well, it's just it'll go in a vault somewhere. That's all. Not here at the house. We're going I, hear you. I hear you. All right, guys. Uh, TJ, what's up? We've got a week uh, to go here until we come back. Yeah. Oh, we've got it. We got a UFC this weekend. Hello. No, yeah, no yeah. that's true. I, I thought you were talking about we were just like going through that week before we come back because we always go through a week before we come back. Uh, the, um, week that, the week that was, I always right. say, well, here we have a good show on Saturday. Paul Felder saved the main event. Paul Felder has stepped in. Uh, he'll be in the red corner fighting Rafael Dos Anjos in the main event. Uh, this is a good, solid show all the way through. Um, we've had nothing but excellent shows. Last week was an excellent show. Really had a good time doing that. This show will start early on Saturday and end early on Saturday for those of you that aren't aware of it. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to be on ESPN. It'll be on ESPN+. Plus. I'm not sure if it's going to be on ESPN. What time does it start? I think first fight, uh, I know will be over by 7 o'clock. It's going to be like a one o'clock start time again, give or take. So check wait, your wait, 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 check wait, 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 wait. The prelims or the main card? The main card is going to be over. We're going to, the show, as I understand it, will be over at seven o'clock, like it was two weeks ago. But just to be like sure, like Khabib? No, there was a show two weeks ago, or not last week, but a show previous that ended at seven o'clock. The I main card home. didn't start at one, though. The main card started at no, four. No, no, the prelims start at one. Oh, yeah, that's normal. That's not, yeah. yeah, that's not great. No, no, that's no, a... that's not normal. The prelims usually start at four. Right, but this, this time it's... This Bruce, is this, sh- listen, listen to me. This is, this is, is this on regular ESPN? That is not a designated yet. Okay, so the, you, this is a show that we have more frequently on ESPN, but this is the same as the Fox shows. When they were on Fox, you were done by seven o'clock. We've only had a couple of these recently, TJ. Most of them. Have I gone understand on so that, yeah, but I'm yeah. saying with Fox, you did it four times a year. Oh, with okay, the ESPN, great. you do it more. But yeah, the this bo- is not this is not that out of the, the ordinary. Bo- the bottom line is, when the show is posted and you're listening for Saturday show, it is going to start early. So check your local listings if you want to catch all the fights live. Obviously, there's going to be repeats. And uh, it looks. What does like that even get- mean now? Check your local listings. Do I grab the TV guide? Are you in the East Coast, the Midwest, or the West Coast? I'm in the West Coast, so I'm talking right. 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. No, I, I hear the you. East Coast, it, you're talking 4 and 10. You know? So what you're asking is, what time zone do you live in? Figure it out yeah, and do the check math. check your time zone, figure it out, do your math yeah. better than Tito Ortiz, and everything will be fine. It's just funny to think of local listings. I haven't looked at I don't even know if they make a TV guide anymore. I know. You know what? It's, that's how I grew up. That's how they always I'm with it. you. So I, no, I'm, like that. I miss it. I'm, I miss having the TV guide. I remember I get that TV guide, and I would, I would just, like, plan out my week. You know and I only I had like four s- channels, Buff. What? I, I came from the days when we had three. Yeah. But, uh, but the TV guide I used to love is I always did the crossword puzzle. Probably the easiest crossword puzzle known to man if you knew anything about TV. But I was always proud that I could finish it. My dad always said, here, son, there's the New York Times. Let's see what you can do with this one. What I get about four answers in about an hour? Definitely difficult. Of course, I was a kid. I'll get at least 12 now. All right. This is a good show this week. Thanks, Dr. Jeff, for being on. Dr. Jeff Davison, our resident and uh, It's Time doctor, will keep us filled in. Uh, Pay attention to everything we talked about today, folks. Pay attention to it. I know you're paying attention to it all the time. Just don't lax. Enjoy life, live life, but just don't lax. TJ, go ahead and tell us whatever you need to tell us. Uh, Nothing really crazy. Just uh, Saturday night, Saturday evening, Saturday morning. Check your local listings. Immediately following the fights, I'll be live uh, with Dean Thomas. Ray Longo, Pearl Gonzalez for extra rounds. Uh, it's on the UFC Fight Pass Facebook page, but you can check out all of our archive shows on uh, Fight Pass proper. Very cool. And everybody, I will see you from the Octagon Saturday night on ESPN Plus and hopefully on one of the ESPN channels also. Um, I just don't have that information for you right now, as we just discussed. Uh, busy week, lots of things going on. Puncher's Chance now has been, I forgot if I said this last week, 
but uh, the state of New York will carry Puncher's Chance. I think I did discuss this last week. All the liquor stores will be able to carry Puncher's Chance come December, January. Uh, that's I'm waiting settled. for my bottle. Your bottle uh, should be there soon. That's all I'm going to tell you. And when it is, you let me know, and we'll have a toast over the air. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. All right, everybody. I got a lot of work to do, a lot of things going on here. I hope everything is safe with you. I hope everything is moving forward. I hope your businesses, your life, prosperity, happiness, health, everything. I wish nothing but the best for all of you all over the world and um, giving you our support here on It's Time Radio. As always, everybody, TJ, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next week. Excellent show. Everybody, as we always say, set your goals, write them down, learn everything about them you can. So when you set on that path to fulfill your goals, you be the best you can be, and then you're winning. And that doesn't mean being number one. That means being the best you can be personally. You will win. And that's what we're all about here on It's Time Radio. I wish you all the best. We'll be back next week with another exciting guest, a good, solid show. But right now, there's work to be done, people to see, things to do, and fights to announce. And I will be back next week. Buffer out. Love you all. Cheers. <laughs>